in this video i'm going to discuss about jenkins cs rf protection and how do you run jenkins jobs remotely from bitbucket using webhook i have documented the required steps in the devops realtime.com let me navigate to jenkins category let me open the article CSRF is the security vulnerability which will be allowing to access your Jenkins portal from the cross sites. To protect it from the CSRF vulnerability, we need to have a CSRF protection enabled on Jenkins. CSRF protection is enabled by default in the latest Jenkins releases. However, if it is not enabled for some reason, we need to enable the CSRF protection to protect it from the CSRF vulnerability. To enable the CSRF protection, we need to set disable a CSRF protection parameter as false. Let me take this parameter. Let me navigate to Jenkins dashboard manage jenkins let me log into the jenkins with my username dpt user and the password dpt password scroll down script console specify the parameter and run now the csrf protection is enabled the jenkins can be authenticated in three different ways the Jenkins can be authenticated through API token, using a password, using a crumb. When CSRF protection is enabled, you must be requesting for the crumb ID so that the Jenkins will be issuing the crumb. The crumb which is issued by the Jenkins will have the four important properties. The crumb will include the username that was generated for. The crumb includes the web session ID from which session the crumb was generated, the IP address of the machine from where the crumb was generated, and a iniq ID. It ensures that the crumb ID which is generated from which web session and from which source machine, the request can be validated only from that session, not from any other web sessions. That is how it can protect it from CSRF vulnerabilities. Now, let me show you how do you access Jenkins to run the jobs remotely. The Jenkins can be accessible using API token. To demonstrate this exercise, I am going to create a simple build job to Trigger the build remotely from Bitbucket when the developer is pushing the code to the Bitbucket repository. Let me navigate to Jenkins, a new item, job name, freestyle project, OK. Let me scroll down, git. I need a Bitbucket repository URL from where the source code has to be cloned. Let me go back to the portal. Let me go to more. Let me open this code in the new tab to navigate to the Bitbucket repository. I have a, a simple Java based login application that I can use in this project to demonstrate you how to configure webhooks. Let me click on clone. Let me copy the Bitbucket repo URL. Go back to the Jenkins. Let me keep the Bitbucket repository URL. Since it is a public repository, the authentication is not required and the credentials need not to be supplied. Scroll down. Let me specify the build step in the execute shell let me specify the absolute path of the maven build command to build this project as the goal is to configure auto build when the developer is pushing the code to bitbucket repository the jenkins build job has to be run automatically 
Hence, let me go and enable a trigger builds remotely and specify the authentication token. The authentication could be anything that you provide here, but make sure that the same authentication token is provided in the webhook URL when it is calling from the Bitbucket. We can see a sample syntax how to prepare the webhook URL. However, I have the sample webhook URL documented in the steps. Let me go back to the documentation. Let me show you how do you authenticate using API token and configure the auto builds from Bitbucket repository. Let me take this sample syntax. Let me go back to Notepad. You need a API token that has to be replaced here to authenticate with Jenkins. Let me go ahead and create a required API token. For now, I am apply and save the job. Go back to your username, configure, add new token, specify the token name, generate a token, copy the token and come back to the notepad and replace the API token. Let me go back to Jenkins. Let me apply and save the token. Take the Jenkins IP address. Let me replace the Jenkins IP address in the webhook URL. Let me remove HTTP protocol. Specify the job name. And that's it. My webhook URL is ready to authenticate Jenkins using API token. Copy the webhook URL. Go back to your Bitbucket repository, repository settings, webhooks, add webhook, the webhook name, the title could be anything. Specify the webhook URL and keep the status as active and specify the trigger as push so that when the developer is pushing the code the webhook will be executed the jenkins job will be triggered remotely save the webhook view request enable the history to see the history of the webhook invocations let me go back to the source code let me go back to the Jenkins dashboard and you can see that the build job is ready and there are no builds triggered so far. Let me go back to Bitbucket repository. Let me edit the source code. Here I am simply editing the readme file. I'm just putting a extra space there as we are just testing that when the commit is done from the developer perspective, the Bitbucket should able to trigger the webhook and run the Jenkins jobs remotely. When the commit is done, go back to repository settings, webhooks, view requests. And now you see that the webhook has triggered 15 seconds ago. The response code is 201. You can see the response of the Jenkins by clicking on view details. Now, if we navigate to the Jenkins and refresh the Jenkins space, excellent. We could see that the Jenkins job has executed successfully through the webhook. In this method, I am using API token to authenticate with Jenkins to trigger the jobs remotely. When you are authenticating Jenkins using API token, the requests are accepted from CSRF production to validate the CRUM.
Now let me move on to authenticate Jenkins using a password. Let me take the sample syntax to authenticate Jenkins using password to configure the webhook. Let me replace the correct Jenkins IP address. Let me specify the job name. My job name is DPT build. Let me specify the username and the password correctly. Specify the remote build job token, which is 12345 in this case. Copy this webhook URL. Let me go back to Bitbucket, webhooks, add a webhook. the webhook title, the webhook URL, and save the webhook. View request, enable the history. Now let me go back to the source code and let me do a simple change to commit the Bitbucket repository. Let me edit a readme file just to demonstrate this. Commit the code. Let me go to repository settings, webhooks, there are two webhooks are configured. Let me see the status of the webhook which is configured using API token which is successful. Let me come back. Let me see the webhook status which is configured using password based. And you can observe that the password based webhook is not triggered correctly. And I can see a 403 error. If I see more details about this error and I am interested in to look at the response of the Jenkins. The Jenkins is responded that there is no valid crumb that was supplied in the request. This is proving that when the CSRF protection is enabled, the API requests are exempted from the crumb validation, but the password based authentications are included in the crumb validation, hence it is failing through the password based authentication. To fix this, let me go to Jenkins dashboard, manage Jenkins, script console. I really wanted to disable a CSRF protection now. To know how to disable a CSRF protection, let me go back to the documentation. Let me copy the parameter. To set it as true, to disable the CSRF protection, let me go back to the script console and execute it. Let me back to manage Jenkins. When the CSRF protection is disabled, we can see a warning note stating that the CSRF is not enabled and it is recommended to enable the protection. This is good for now. Let me go back to a Bitbucket repository. Let me go to the source. Let me edit a file. Click on edit. Let me do a, a simple change. I'm just adding a, a space for now. Commit the code. Let me go to repository settings webhooks let me see the response of the api webhook it is successful which is triggered 17 seconds ago go back to webhooks let me see the request of password based webhook 
this is great i could see that the a password based webhook is now working correctly with 201 as a response code as the csrf protection is currently disabled as it is not recommended to disable the csrf protection let me go ahead and enable the production one more time. Manage Jenkins, scroll down, script console, specify the parameter. The parameter value should be false. Run the script. Go back to Manage Jenkins. Now I do not see any warning as the CSRF production is currently enabled. If you are using the CSRF production and you want to pass a scrum as part of the request when you are using any scripted clients, then you should know how do you request for the scrum. Let me go back to the documentation. When you are using the scripted clients to access the Jenkins to trigger the builds remotely or to change the Jenkins configuration through the APIs, First, we need to request for the crumb ID by running this duplicate command. Let me copy this command. Let me logging into the Jenkins CLI. Let me call the API to request for the crumb. The response you see with the crumb ID. Let me copy the crumb ID that is generated. As we discussed, the crumb ID is generated based on four parameters. It will be included the user who has requested for the crumb, the web session ID and the source IP address from where the request was generated to generate the crumb. And the request should be validated against the same source with the same session. Let me take the crumb. Now we need to prepare a webhook URL to call the Jenkins job remotely using the crum. From the documentation, let me take this curl command to initiate a post request to trigger the Jenkins jobs remotely. Let me get the syntax and let me replace the crum in the syntax. Let me specify the Jenkins IP address. Well, I am using the username and the password to authenticate with Jenkins with the crumb to validate it against the CSRF protection. Let me go back to the server where I have requested for the crumb. It could be from any scripted client need not to be from the Jenkins server. Let me run this post request to trigger the Jenkins job remotely with the Chrome validation. Just to sum it up, CSRF is the vulnerability to access your Jenkins from the cross site. To protect it from the CSRF vulnerability, we need to enable a CSRF protection in the Jenkins. When CSRF production is enabled, we can use the API token to authenticate Jenkins to run the jobs remotely or can use the crumb as well. If you are authenticating the Jenkins using the password based access, then the CSRF protection must be disabled by specifying the disable CSRF protection parameter as true in the script console in the Jenkins dashboard. Remember when you are issuing the API call to request for the crumb, the crumb will be generated based on the four important parameters. So it will be validating the crumb against the source to check the source requested username and the web session ID and the IP address as well.